Welcome back to Lisa Michelle Beyond the Scale. I am out on my AM walk and I figured this would be like the perfect time to make a video. Everyone in the neighborhood is getting up going to work. Kids are going to school and I'm out on my walk. It's about 6.30. Woke up at 5 got my shower and got dressed and boom here I am I have a Weight Watchers friend and she is really nice and has a sweet six-year-old daughter named Cruzy well I was talking with her last night in Facebook Messenger so I asked her do you have any topics that you maybe like me to discuss and she gave me a topic of emotional eating and I told her well I'm not an emotional eater I eat for flavor and the whole experience of it and I said oh I'll have to do some research on that because I don't consider myself an emotional eater that's the thing but she had I told her a few things about my childhood and it made sense. I'm like, oh, okay, I hadn't even thought of that, but I was um, trying to get this wording out correctly. It's early. I haven't had coffee yet. Um, my mom was married to my father for all of my life, all the way up until I was in the fourth grade don't really quite know what age that is can't remember but um, I know I remember when you know I was extra young when I'm eating a meal I'm always concerned like say I'm eating breakfast and I said mom what are we having for lunch eating lunch mom what are we having for dinner and then she asked me well, why do you want to know because I want to know I want to eat and I don't remember like being like, oh, I'm so hungry. What are we having? And I didn't think that we were ever going to like miss a meal or anything behind it. So I just wanted to know because I had something that I was looking forward to. The food and the flavor and anticipating like, oh, it's going to be good. So I've been like that my whole life that I can recall. So... Eventually, years later, when I was in the fourth grade, she got a divorce. Well, they did, because it wasn't just her. But it affected me, and she was in some type of depression, as you would think somebody would be after a relationship. A marriage has not worked out. So she was depressed and wasn't doing a whole bunch of cooking really a lot like almost to nada so I have a brother he's two years older than me I'm 51 so he just turned 53 two years apart he did a lot of the cooking for us we had groceries but we didn't have a lot of items that matched like we'd have peanut butter no jelly mm peanut butter and jelly no bread we have cereal no milk just a lot of mitch match items that we had to try to find some substitute for so with that being said my brother did a lot of the cooking he'd find us something but whenever he did he was just two years older than me so he put a lot of salt and a lot of sugar on different items that called for it and my young palate got accustomed to those things and boom here years later I have high blood pressure and diabetes I really think that that triggered those things and it's not like I can't stop or anything but let's just say I have an addiction to food um, I really 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 love sugar more than the average person I know it has something to do with that but 
we'll be moving right along from that. Um, all my food that I eat up until this day, it's an experience, it's an event, it's special. Um, when I was little, for our birthdays, my mom would make birthday pancakes and she'd put a candle on the person birthday that it was and the other child which was my brother he'd get one candle and I'd get a number of candles for how many um years I was so with that being said we have memories I like pancakes for the birthday pancakes I have memories she would use a lot of butter and syrup I use a lot of butter and syrup now I so love butter, bread, anything that has carbohydrates in it is just yummy to me. But I know when you're young, your mom's cooking for you or whoever's cooking for you, they form your eating style and things that you're accustomed to, things that you like. Just like I can't tolerate spicy food items, they're just, they're mind blowing. My mom didn't give my brother and I any jalapenos, any hot sauce, any scotch bonnets, any type of pepper. We didn't get those type of things that just, we never got them. But she eats those things, but she didn't give them to us. So guess what? I don't do hot. I remember I was a young girl, young, i say about three or four giant robot came on TV. I know y'all like don't know what that is. The ones that are young. You don't know what it is. Some old show. I can't even Google it. How about that? Google it. Giant robot. It was in the 60s. 60s, 70s, I guess. Yeah. Google that. She came in. My brother and I were laying on the floor watching the show on, t on TV. It was black and white. And she brought a tray of coffee in. It had cream and sugar. Oh my God, it was good. Had she brought me that coffee black, I wouldn't be drinking that nasty black coffee. Then again, maybe I would. And I would probably take my coffee black. But seeing as though she brought it full of cream and sugar, guess what? I like cream and sugar coffee till this day. And I'll tell you, you know this is your fault, right? <laughs> and she just laughs. But you have to be careful what you give your children when they're young is forming their palate for an adult and you want to make sure that um, they have a very nice um, healthy eating style and put good things into their body and not be fighting against their weight and feeling miserable in their clothes in their adulthood and paint them out a nice active lifestyle something that they can tolerate make it fun go out with them go walking go ride bikes and stuff while you're still young I did things with my son but they weren't things that um included activity he's never had a weight problem so he goes to Weight Watchers with me now because guess what he used to play football when he was in high school and then he he stopped and when you're still in, you know, consuming the same amount of calories and not active, it blows up on you. But he's 25, almost 26, and he has lost over 50 pounds, and I'm really, really proud of him. Yeah, almost 60, so, oh, I'm just so proud of him, I tell you. But be careful what you give your kids. Have them consuming some water and some fruit and getting activity. Stay off that social media sitting on your behind. It's not good for you. Let them get out and be active. It'll be all right. It'll help you too along the way. Your past experiences form your adultness, <laughs> your adult eating palate. So be mindful. And guess what? It's not too late to um, change your eating habits. I work on mine daily. I had crap all weekend. I had a little crap yesterday. Today is a new day. I don't never beat myself up because I had something I shouldn't have had. 
each meal is a new opportunity to start fresh. I look at it like that. So I didn't walk this weekend because I was out visiting friends for a much needed break. And now I am back on Mrs. Walker here. And I'm doing me. I got my Fitbit on and I'm feeling spry. I have um, acupuncture later on today. That's going to be nice. And here I am spending time with you all. You all have a most wonderful and prosperous day. Go out and do something for you. Do something healthy. Do something active. Spend some time with your children. The single mothers out there give you a shout out because it's not easy being mom and dad. I was one of those mothers. I'm still a mother but I don't have that whole situation with me now because guess what I'm 51 and he is almost 26 I don't have to do all that anymore but I know I raised a fine son so I am here to tell you the future is bright give them everything you got because they need you I love you all and you have a wonderful day and if you have any topics like uh, my friend gave me one Hit me up in my inbox and leave me a message on this video. Please click like, share, and subscribe. Lisa Michelle, Beyond the Scale. Peace.